Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Today I want to talk about neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself, make new neural connections. So how does this work? Well, I want to provide an example that I think highlights it quite nicely. But what I first need to show you is the brain itself. So I've drawn up the brain. This is the front of the brain. This is the back of the brain. And you can see the brain has all those grooves. Now, if it dips in, that's called a sulcus. If it bumps out, that's called a gyrus. Now, what you'll find is that right in the middle of the brain here is a sulcus that separates the front aspects from the more posterior aspects of the brain. And this sulcus is called the central sulcus. Now, interestingly, in front of the central sulcus is where we control motor movement. And behind the central sulcus is where we feel sensations. I want to focus on the sensory area behind the central sulcus. It's actually called the somatosensory cortex. Now the cortex is the very outside one to two millimeters of the brain. So if I were to get a knife and I were to cut down the central sulcus, discard the front of the brain and have a look from the front of what we, what we can see once we've cut it, we'll see something that looks a little bit like this on one side of the brain itself. Now let's talk about feeling sensation. Let's just say somebody just touched my index finger. That signal goes from my finger down my arm into my spinal cord up to my brain stem, crosses the other side at the medulla, and then goes up to the thalamus. The thalamus then projects it to the somatosensory cortex, specifically the area of the cortex that deals with me feeling things of my finger, which is actually located right here on the most lateral aspect. All right, now, as you can see, if there's a part of my somatosensory cortex dedicated to my finger, there must be a part dedicated to other body parts, and that's what you can actually see here there is a map of our body on our brain. And as you can see, where do the, the, it's not the same map as what our body actually exists in. What you see is this. The most medial side, you're gonna have the genitals, then the foot, then the leg, then the knee, then the neck, then the arm, then the hand, then the face, including the eyes, nose, lips, tongue, and voice box. That means that, for example, when I touch my finger, I know that someone or something is touching my finger once the signal gets to this part of my cortex. It also means if I were to go into this person's brain with an electrode and stimulate that area, I would think, or that individual would think, that they have, are having their finger touched, right? All right, what happens when somebody loses their arm? Or let's just say they lose their hand, for example. Well, it means that all the sensory neurons for the hand now no longer exist. But all the pathways still exist all the way up into the brain, including the map for the hand on the brain. Do you think this map on the brain for the hand still receives signals? The answer is no. It's not receiving any signals. And the brain gets hungry for signals. It loves receiving signals. So what happens is the neurons that are present here get a bit bored. And they start to have a conversation with the neurons surrounding it. Now the neurons surrounding those for the hand are those of the face. And so what that means is a conversation can now occur and in some individuals, you can tell them who have lost their hand to close their eyes and you rub down the side of their face and ask them, what are you feeling? And they say, well, I feel you rubbing my cheek, but I also feel you rubbing my index finger, my middle finger, my ring finger, and my pinky finger. Why? Because the neurons have started a conversation and this is neuroplasticity. I'm Dr. Mike.